Keşke. Tak. So, this guy goes to the doctor. And he says, Doc. What kind of doctor? What? What kind of doctor? Specialist or what? Oh, David. He's a urologist. Now are you happy? Well, it makes it more realistic. Detail, Kenny. Okay? Grandma, what are pickles made of? Dad, I write comedy. I know what makes things funny. Oh, well, show us. I was trying to. Will you let him talk? Pickles come from cucumbers, sweetheart. So this guy goes to his urologist and he says, Doc, I'm having a little trouble. I'm not um, functioning the way I used to. You know, it's my... Um... Not in front of the children. Penis. Right. Right you are, honey. Is that Hope's face? Look at it. Does that face belong to Hope or what? So the doctor says, um, no problem, we can fix you right up. Uh, you have a choice. Uh, there's this little device with a hand pump, cost you about $400. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There's no guarantee. But we also have a second choice. It's this incredible state of the art. You pass the mustard, please. Oh, here, have some fries, honey. You look thin. Oh, me, have some coleslaw. No, no thanks, Grandma. I'm fine. Leave him alone, Molly. He's an adult. He can take care of himself. Sue me. I care about Alan's health. Can somebody help me light this? Not indoors, sweetheart. Grandma? Where do cucumbers come from? Excuse me. From the ground. Excuse me, am I in the middle of a story here or am I on some kind of an acid flashback? Just tell the story, honey. Please, Uncle Kenny, I'm limp with suspense. Have a pickle, it may help. <laughs> so, the doctor says we also have this incredible state-of-the-art museum quality gizmo that we install internally and all you have to do is press a button and bingo. Satisfaction guaranteed. Is this a joke? Nothing's funny. You say this is the urologist talking. <sighs> Sparkler, please. Molly, it's the 4th of July. Come on. Is it wrong with you, Annie? Just be careful, Audrey, OK? All right, sweetie. You hold it up. There you go. So the guy says, how much is this going to set me back? And the doctor says, $75,000. And the guy says, wow, I got to go home and discuss this with the wife. So he does, and he comes back the next day, and he says, the wife and I have discussed it, and we've decided we'd rather renovate the kitchen. I heard it already. <laughs> oh. Look, magic fire. OK, all eyes here. Who wrote this? William Shakespeare? Good, Shauna. And the form is? Danny? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Take a closer look. Oh, uh, well, I like each of the lines, and they seem to make sense. But the whole thing doesn't add up. Excellent! Ah! You win the all-expense paid trip to Atlantic City! Danny hit it right on the nose. I took seven couplets from seven different sonnets and put them all together. They are all Shakespeare, they are all beautiful, but all together, they make no sense. So, what does this tell us? Never try Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sort of. Never trust a brand name just because it's in the great book section. And? To thine own self be true? Exactly. Trust your own judgment. Trust your own instincts. Use your own eyes and ears. That's what they're there for. And never end a sentence in a preposition, which is what I just did. I got one in my locker. He's kind of rugged looking. He's, he's got a full head of hair. Mm -hmm. That's always a bonus. But is he married? No. This one is divorced. Uh -huh. I think you'll really, really like it. Oh, I already have one blind date this week. Well, it's perfect. You can wear the same outfit. Lobster Thermidor again. You want Lobster Thermidor? You make it yourself. I got a million recipe books from my good little wifey days. Well, maybe I don't want to be a good little wife. I don't blame you. We didn't either. So, you got a date for the prom? Do you? Don't deflect. You ask anyone? Maybe. Not yet, huh? 
narrowing my prospects. You know, we better narrow fast. We got exactly... 24 days. Yeah, I know. Hi, Mom. What's up? No, it's okay. We're not dining formally this evening. I'm not talking with my mouth full. It's only half full. I'm okay. great. I'm doing great. How's my social life? What can I say? I'm doing a lot of field work. I am not picky, Mom. I'm moderately discriminating. A brain and a body. Is that too much to ask? I really don't think that's fair. You can't possibly know how I behave with men. No. I am not too critical or aggressive. You know, this is the reason why I live 2,500 miles away from you. Would you like to talk to Alan? He's right here. He's dying to talk to you. Hi, Grandma. No, I, I haven't asked anybody specific yet. There are a couple of prospects. I would like herbal tea, uh, chamomile if you have it, and the fresh berries, but no cream. So, Jennifer tells me you're divorced. Well, not exactly. I mean, actually, my wife and I are still living together. But we have an arrangement, you see. We both date other people. Um, Nina tells me that you're divorced. Yeah. It's been about a year and a half. Oh. But, uh, I miss Janice. I think about her. All the time. It was all my fault. I wasn't, uh... I wasn't a very good husband. But I was, I was an even words father we had five kids i miss those kids so damn much i almost brought the youngest one along tonight he's he's two and a half <laughs> and then i'll have the salmon but could you ask him to cook it in just the tiniest bit of oil absolutely thank you you're welcome sir I'll have the goose liver pate, the baby lamb chops, rare. Uh, French fries, well done. Let's skip the vegetable altogether, shall we? And uh, diet soda. I keep looking, but just can't seem to find the right woman. It's, uh, it's not a communication thing. I mean, I think of myself as a very sensitive guy. It's. Uh, of a more intimate nature than that. See, I have a real problem because, well, I have an enormous. My theory of women is whatever they say, do the opposite. They say they're not hungry, order a dinner, they'll eat it. They say they don't want to go out, get courtside seats to the Sixers, they'll show up. They say, be gentle. I say rough them up a little. They say they don't want to have sex. Yeah, I did. I had a great time. <laughs> so can I see you tonight? Oh, you know, um, I'm going to Atlantic City today with a girlfriend. And um, oops, I don't think we'll be back too late. Mm -hmm. I'll call you. so early. Mm, I was awakened by a strange male voice. Yes, well, uh, don't worry, you won't be hearing that again. So, what was wrong with that one? He exaggerates. Uh, Mom, don't take this the wrong way, but I really don't like it when you have men stay over. You know what? I don't like it that much either. I'm trying to be serious here. Why do you have to turn everything into a joke? Because life is funny, Alan. Or haven't you noticed? 
I just appreciate it if you wait until I'm out of here before you start bringing men over. Jeez, you make it sound like I'm some kind of a slut. And I know you're not promiscuous. I know you're discriminating. Maybe to the point of being picky. Let's not drag grandma into this, shall we? I, I just don't feel it's appropriate for a son to participate in his mother's love life. Who said anything about love? You see? That's exactly what I mean. We shouldn't be having this conversation. It's really inappropriate. Alan, honey, please. Just try and understand. I want to meet somebody nice, that's all. Look, m maybe you could just uh, refrain from having anyone stay over until I graduate and move out of here. Oh, I see. We're going to have the California discussion again. No, we're not. It's not under debate. I'm going to UCLA, I'm going to try for a scholarship. Well, Kenny said I could stay with him for a while. Grandma thinks it's a good idea, too. Anything I'm against, Grandma thinks is a good idea. And I do, too. Doesn't that count for anything? Frankly, no. Not as long as I have to pay for it. <laughs> well, I'm not staying here. I'm sick of this place. Alan. No, don't Alan me. I don't want to live here anymore. I am not the little man of the house. I want my own life. That is inappropriate. He's 17, for God's sake. He's going to change his mind eight times before he decides where he wants to go to college. If you believe that, you don't know Alan. Hmm. This is my worst nightmare. The dance up at college with my mother. I can't believe you still care what she thinks of you. <laughs> you can't? No. As a matter of fact, I myself have come to terms with the whole mother issue. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I envy you. Mm. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, I just I feel weird. And I'm fine. I'm gonna sit down. What? You feel faint? No, I just I'm achy and my my hands are weird. They're swollen. Well, maybe you're coming down with something. Oh, God. You think you have a fever? I can't get sick. Not now. I've got Alan's graduation. I got term papers. Whoa. Can you walk? I want to go home. Okay. Yes, this is Hope Altman. I'm gonna need a substitute for today. I'm, so I'm sorry, I can't talk. I have to hang up. Feeling a little better now? No. I can barely move my fingers. Well, I'll give you some cortisone to relieve the swelling, but I think it's a contact dermatitis. Dr. Murphy, call 7401. Dr. Murphy. Hey, Alan, get up. All right, take care of you guys. See you later. <laughs> See you, Alan. Good night, Alan. Yeah. I miss you, Beth. I had a great time. Oh, me too. Would you like to get together again next weekend? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Hi, come in. Okay, who's next? I am, I am. I gotta get home. Yeah. Right, see you later. Bye, Alan. Bye. can't be absolutely certain. I suspect rheumatoid arthritis. We need to run some other tests. Your sed rate is high. I want some more blood work. Lupus is a real possibility. 
extreme fatigue, lethargy, depression. Mrs. Altman, have you considered talking to a psychiatrist? I'm sick. And I can't deal with it myself. Can I... Can I come out there and stay with you, Mom? Okay. It's a scar. Why do you have it? I got in a car accident a long time ago. I got a bad cut there. Will it ever go away? No. I Reminds me of you. Yeah. Thanks. Strange mixture of curious, obsessive, and self-involved. Yeah. If you weren't so disease written, I'd punch you hard in the arm like I used to. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you didn't tell me they were already here? love. <laughs> Are you okay? Honey? I'm fine, Mom. That's why I flew out here. Is there anything you need? Can I get you anything? Think. Well, you've done it. Perfect wife, perfect kids, perfect house. Oh, yeah, I'm so glad I get to stay at the trailer park with mom and dad. I don't know. Let's not be snide. I'm not, really. Just because you make six times as much as the average school teacher? It's more like 12, actually. Well, whatever it is, you deserve it. You do. You've worked really hard for your success. In fact, I think they should be paying you more. Really? You think so? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You make America laugh. All I do is teach him to think. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Daddy, Hope, my fish. Oh, neat. Oh. Uh, uh, okay, that's it. We're flushing Goldie down the toilet. No. Daddy's joking, sweetheart. I knew that. <laughs> Isn't she smart? Candy. So this man is lying on the bench there, practically in rags. So. I walk over and I give him what's left of my lunch. Our dad, maitre d' to the planet. Uh, no thanks. No, no, I always give leftovers from the deli to the street people. I said, why waste? It's all wrapped up and everything? Uh, no, 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 not for me. So, this guy, he opens it and he says, corned beef. I don't want it, I don't eat meat. That's not what happened. Yes, it is, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Your mother thinks I'm an idiot. Well? It's, it's been a long day. Hope is sleepy. Uh, yeah, I'm a little tired myself. <laughs> what do you say we head for home, huh? Yep. Come on, honey. I can't believe I'm gonna live with those people again. Yeah, they're exhausting, aren't they? Oh, I'm tired. Well, look at the bright side. He won't be up until at least 6.30. Oh, great. Hey, you should have graduated and left me alone with him like you did. I didn't leave you alone. Nah. Oh, I cleared the way for you. I, I, I cut through the, the thorns and the brambles so you could just skip along the path for you as a bird. <laughs> it's a mixed metaphor, by the way. I knew that. That's amazing. Everything went by in a second and a half. Can you believe how old you are? Some days. It's amazing, Uncle Ken. 
What? Such a minor talent like yourself should help himself to such a huge slice of the American pie. <laughs> You're intensely jealous. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'll never have anything like this. Never say never. If I can do it, someone as mediocre as yourself can really soar. Really. I know what you're thinking. And the answer is yes. I have a number of hot, steaming babes lined up for you. That's not what I was thinking. You're gonna think I'm a horrible person for even saying this, but... What if this is Mom's way of trying to get me to stay with her? Well, uh, gee, Ellen, I don't she think... She knew I was uh... planning to come out of here to college. I mean, what if she got sick of some sort of psychosomatic thing? I mean, what if metaphysically she brought it on herself? And it worked, and it kept us together. You think I'm a crazy person for even thinking this? Uh, no, I don't. But I don't think that that's what happened. Want a beer? Yeah. Go get us, too. Uh, oh, here yeah, you are, you and Kenny. Uh, you were always so close. No, we weren't. I went home before we went to high school. Oh, look at this one. This is the three of you. <gasps> but Andrea would be what? Forty-five. Forty-five? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh. Here are you and Kenny at the beach. Uh, I mean, how much cuter could he have been? Oh, I always liked him best. That isn't so. I loved all three of you equally. Each one. Ah, I'm not kidding. Oh, Hopi. <laughs> Here's one of you as a little girl. Oh. Ooh, look at that adorable face. <laughs> Andrea. No, Andy, no, no, it's sorry. you. I, I know because you're carrying that godforsaken teddy bear you had to take with you everywhere. You were <laughs> such a stubborn child. Oh, I was pliable. I just didn't do everything your way like everybody else did. Oh, what a complete exaggeration. I am not a willful person. <laughs> you, what are you laughing at? I, I, let's not argue. Hope he just got here. Oh, oh I'm sorry, darling. I, Ah, oh, he's right. <laughs> I, I, I only want you to be comfortable, you know. Can, can I get you no, anything? No, I'm not too comfortable. I'm not an invalid. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get better and, and get out of here as soon as possible. You understood? Oh, absolutely. In all honesty, I mean, I have to say you already look a whole lot better than you did last night. Really, I mean, the swelling's going down, right, David? Absolutely. <laughs> when is that? Oh, oh my. Oh, God. Oh, oh, that, uh, oh look you, at that. <laughs> you hated my hair. I did. You hated what, my what hair. How did you put streaks in your hair? This is 1981. You're a kid. What's, what's you don't put streaks in your hair when you're a kid. I was 16. I know. That's what they did there. Yeah, they sent me your records and the reports of your lab work from Philadelphia. Yeah, the doctors there thought it was either lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. Well, I don't agree. I think it's scleroderma. Uh, what's that, a deli entree? Kenneth, please. In English, Dr. Mossman. Scleroderma, it's Greek for hardening of the skin. <laughs> oh, God. Is as awful as it sounds? Well, it, it can cover a whole range of symptoms. In its simplest form, it severely affects the skin. It can, it can affect a, a part of the body, a, a finger or an arm, or all over. It's, it's crippling, debilitating, but you can live with it. On the other end of the spectrum, we have what we call progressive or systemic scleroderma, and it affects the vital organs, the, the lungs, the kidneys, the heart, as well as the skin. Well, Hope has the first kind, right? No. No, I'm afraid she has the second type. Systemic scleroderma. Wait a minute. I, how can you be so sure? Are you absolutely positive? In Philadelphia, the doctors ran all kinds of tests, and they couldn't figure it out. What causes it? Well, we don't know. It's only been recently that we could even diagnose it so accurately. Is there a cure? Not yet. No, nope, we're working on it. <sighs> Is it fatal? Some people live for a long time. 
How long? Well, the prognosis is not as good when the internal organs are severely affected. But you could survive for as long as 10 years. Tell you the truth, I'm relieved. I mean, I, I'm glad to finally know what it is I have. And, and I'll tell you something right now. I'm going to beat it. I'm going to overcome these odds. You know, I've always wanted to make it with a mother and a daughter. Try the Judds. As you can see, Vincent has only one thing on his mind. I don't have a mind. I have a thing. <laughs> Great and repair. Taking far too long with that line. He has to speed it up. It's the not thing funny. Thing. So, having fun? Did you write that thing joke? You had a hand in it. <laughs> so what do you think? You can do so much better than this. You're always a teacher, aren't you? So when do I get an A? Teach? Oh, you got one. You are an A. <laughs> Big A. Thanks. I like that. I got a line change. <laughs> hey, you're already dressed. Yep. Running the marathon today. <laughs> Kenny's driving me to Santa Barbara to meet Sharon Monsky. Do you think that's a good idea? Uh, I mean, maybe you should stay home and rest. <sighs> not a cripple, Mom. I'm not. I'm not. I am not going to think that way. I'm going to lead a normal life. You look a little pale. You sure you should be making this trip? I have to make this trip. I'm a teacher. I do homework. I'm sure it looks innocent enough from the outside, but inside they're doing experiments. Hey, do I need this? No, but I think I do. I'm a little nervous. How do I look? Is my hair okay? Let's go. Come on. <laughs> so, you're a TV writer? Oh, uh, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> do you know Gary Shanling or Jerry Seinfeld by any chance? No, I don't. Bummer. <laughs> anyway, when I get to know you a little better, I'll exploit your connections for one of our benefits. How about that? I look forward to it. <laughs> That's not what today's about, though. So what would you like to know? How long do I have to live? Nobody can answer that. Ten years ago, doctors told me I had two years. I'm still here. Well, for what it's worth, I'm perfectly healthy and I feel guilty as hell Kenny, about it. Kenny, shut up. Kenny, shut up. Why don't I know about this disease? Why isn't anybody? Maybe because it's a woman's disease. So many more people have this disease than have been diagnosed. And the majority are women of your age. Scleroderma is not rare or obscure. It's just not visible. It's difficult going out in public looking like this. Having people stare at me. Scleroderma is a painful, ugly killer. It's a struggle just to survive, to take care of one's family. That's really all you can do. Is there any chance of a cure? There's more than a chance. <laughs> this is a solvable problem. Maybe not in my lifetime. 
and 80 in years. I, um, I may not make it to the finish line, but I'm going to race here. And I'm on a mission to solve this puzzle. There is Hoke. <laughs> Hoke. <laughs> so what's going to be the most difficult thing for me to deal with? Sir Nee, the thought of leaving my three children and my husband to Soaring Ready is the hardest part. And I'll never be ready. It's like you got problems. I got a bad case of athlete's foot. Didn't sleep a wink last night. Annie was all over me. Kenny! Laura got Kenny, a Kenny, and stop. Drawing. Stop. I'm not depressed. You're not? No. Sharon's made it for 10 years. I'm going to beat her record. I'm very competitive. Tell me about it. <laughs> thought of a way that you can help me. I want to document this, the way it feels. I want a living history. I may not look this way forever. I mean, I want Alan and Alan's children to... I want your children to know who I was. What do you want me to do? You're great, Mom. You know, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, now, I, I don't talk until I'm talked to. Okay. Okay. I can talk. <clears throat> the most emotional moment. Uh, is that on? Yeah, it's on, Dad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, all right. Where are we? Uh, the most emotional moment of Hope's birth... Daddy, was, Daddy, what? Daddy, Daddy. I think that's going back a little far. Yeah, she's right. Maybe you could describe Hope growing up. Hmm? Oh, God, I feel like I'm at my own funeral. All right, growing up, uh, well, she was a very happy child, huh? Hey, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of spunk. She was, she was a leader. Also, she was very cute, like a little doll. She loved to be hugged and kissed. <laughs> what, am I boring you? No, you're boring everybody. Okay, Mom, um, let's get your point of view. Uh, what was Hope like as a teenager, as a young woman? I don't think I should be hearing this. Hope. Hope was always very easy with people. I mean, you know how she talks. She was like that. Very friendly. Loved people. So you had no um, conflicts with her growing up? No. Oh, I had a lot of disagreements with her. Mainly because of the guys she went out with. Uh -huh. her, her, her taste was different. She picked the wrong husband. Okay, cut. Cut. This is not the documentary I had in mind. Oh, what, you want to be the network censor here? Come on. Uh, Dad? Uh, well, hey, 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 the truth is, between Hope and Mother, there was some bickering. He is so full of it. Oh, well, th come on, she wanted her independence. All right, let's put it that way. She wanted her independence. Uh, that is not it, David. She didn't have good taste in men. There are some women who don't. Oh, she wanted her independence. She needed to get away from it. Hey, she got married at 20. She left home and went to Philadelphia. She wasn't 20. What? All right, so what year? What, another year? What are you splitting hairs for? Am We're I talk talking what? here? She left home when she was 22. That is, that, that, that is not unusual. I, I think we've got enough right here. Well, I mean, when a child leaves at the age of 22, you don't exactly call that running away from home. Now, do you? It's okay, Mom. It's good. Hey, how about if I play something on the piano? No, I think we've got enough right here for a Cable Ace Award, really. It's very good. Well, come on, it's not that bad. David, call the doctor. Honey. Honey, are you okay? Uh-uh. Ooh, look, flowers. Look. Oh, that pretty girl. Could I get a double cheeseburger fries and I'm so sorry. Look, people, lots of people. Ah, strange cryptic message. Hmm, staff in there. Ah, here we are. <laughs> Her flesh is very rigid. I can insert the needle. Let me try. <laughs> there, that wasn't so bad, now was it? Yeah, not for you. Oh. Kenneth, out. Now. I just want to know what's going on. What's with all the uh, blood work? 
Your blood sugar's way up. Could be from the cortisone. I think the scleroderma may be affecting your kidneys. We need to run some more tests. Yeah, you guys run more tests than the DMV. Kenneth. Okay. I'm going. Oh, baby. I hate this disease more than anything else in the world. I swear to you, I'm gonna kill it! Sweetheart, I know you will. <laughs> I want to talk to Alan. Alone. Oh, of course. We'll wait out in the corner. I don't know what to do. Just be here for me. Come here. Do you know how proud I am of you? You're a wonderful boy. So, Alan, how did it go in there? Tell us your innermost thoughts. I really don't feel like talking. But all your fans out here are interested. Please, Uncle Kenny, not now. But what better time than now to capture the drama, the tension, the pain? All right, you, know, you want a statement? I'll give you a statement. I'm tired of watching my mother get sicker and sicker. I can't stand to see her like that. I feel helpless. I want to run away. You know what the worst part is? All I can do is think about myself. I put off starting to go to college. I spent all my nights and days here in the hospital. The only people I see are my family. When do I get a life? See it, can't you? What? Well, she's better. She'll be out of here in a few days. Uh, Dad, trust me, she may be out of here, but she's not better. You don't think so? Well, she's got a lot more color. She's probably running a fever. Why do you have to be so negative? Negative, Dad, she has scleroderma. She's on dialysis for kidney disease. Her esophagus is deteriorating. You, what, you think she's getting better? Oh, she's a fighter. She's a human being, Bob. She's a very sick human being. Oh. You don't know her. You don't spend the time with her that we do. I mean, Molly and I, we can see improvements. Look, she's better. I guarantee it. Sure, Pop. OK. Oh, hey, Shaniqua. <laughs> I want you to meet my son, Kenny. Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Shaniqua's little boy, Rakeem, plays second base for the Inglewood Blue Jays, and her daughter, Nicole, teaches school. So. Can I get some help here? Oh, Right behind you. Oh, please, God, don't do this. I'll do anything. I'll, um, I'll write jokes for Tom Snyder. Just come on, let her get better. Let her get better. It's all right. The drug reaction. She's gonna be fine. Sure she is. Yeah, her daughter teaches first grade. Whose daughter? Shanique with the nurse. Her daughter, Nicole, teaches first grade. So, one of her students raises his hand and says, I have to go to the little boy's room. So, he's gone for about five minutes, and then he comes back. What's the point of lean corned beef? Either way, it clogs your arteries. Mom, Dad's telling a story. I know. I heard it already. Well, I'd like to hear it. Well, he comes back, and he says, I can't find it. So she draws him a little diagram and sends him on his way again. I thought she sent another child with him. No, 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 no. That's not the way it goes. The kid comes back again. He says, I still can't find it. Then she sends another little oh, boy, Mikey, yeah. to help him find the laboratory. So both boys come back after a few minutes. And she says, well, did you find it? 
And Mikey says, yeah. He had his undershorts on backwards. <laughs> Underpants! Yay! <laughs> That's so cute. What a sweet story. You think so? He's told it better. Oh, be careful, honey. Don't, don't draw on the table. But it's for Aunt Hope. It's very beautiful, honey. We'll take it to her tomorrow, OK? She's coming home. I'd like to propose a toast to my lovely but immobilized sister who couldn't be here tonight. She is not immobilized. Not yet, but there is hope. Uh, <laughs> Kenny, knock it off. Finish your chop liver, will you? No, I want to sing a song uh, for hope. I'd like to dedicate this number to my sister. Scleroderma, 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 scleroderma. That's enough. We don't need this. And to continue with my medley of hit. Scleroderma, scleroderma. Okay, guys, let's go. That's it. I think we've had him. We're having fun, aren't we? Get your coat. Way to go, Daddy. Mommy! Shame on you. I made your favorite cranberry juice jello. I'm not hungry. Well, be that as it may, you have to eat. Yeah. Okay. Here you go, honey. Here. Mm. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I can't do it. We'll try it later. It's all right, honey. It's all right. Honest. I cannot stand this. I know, honey, it's terrible to be sick. I... Is there anything I can get you anything? Will you better? stop saying that? The only thing you can get me is better. And you can't do that. Nobody can. All right? You understand? I hate this. I hate this disease. I never wanted you to take care of me. I should be taking care of you. Oh, <laughs> Mommy. Mommy, I'm so ashamed. I'm 40 years old. I'm still living with my parents. Hey, you think you've got problems? Your mother and I were waiting for you kids to grow up and move out before we got a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, get well and get out of here, will you? I'm trying, I'm trying. Now I got it. What are you doing sitting here in the dark? I was meditating. You were sleeping. I saw you drool. Drooling is part of my mantra. Did you visit your mother today? No. no I didn't feel like it. Well, let me tell you, it looks like spin art in her room. She can't keep anything down. Sorry I missed that.
Well, it's been a few days. You're gonna check up on her tomorrow. I don't know. Getting tired of the good little boy routine. Oh? Yeah. I got accepted at UCLA. I want to start going to school. I want to start meeting girls. I want more of a normal life. Gee, I don't know, Alan. Uh, you may just have to settle for unique. Don't drool on the remote. Night. Hard day? Have you been drinking? Uh, we had to work late. One of the guys brought back a six pack. I shared a malt beer with a co executive producer. Is that okay? Hey, it was just an innocent question. the other way around. I can't oh, you're remember. Not Bear down, Kenny. Annie. You're not Push helping, Penny. Push into it. Good. Like, oh, that was a good one. Okay. It's, it's crowning. Very good. Very good. Okay. Looks like a little brunette. It's a boy or a girl. Oh, we'll know in a moment. Okay. Good. Oh, good, Annie. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Oh, it's a girl. <laughs> ten fingers. Ten toes. Okay. She's looking healthy. Just Miss Kenny and the girls. They just went upstairs to see you. Oh, Annie. Oh, baby Penny. She's beautiful. Thank you. Oh. Oh, honey. Here. Mm -hmm. Here. Take a picture. She does. She looks like you. Like I used to. <laughs> Just like I used to. So nice the baby was born here. There's a yin yang thing going on. You know, young, old, healthy, sick. That's nice for the family. When they visit, they get a twofer.
here. What? Oh, we just hey. saw the baby. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, she's so beautiful. Another one who looks like Annie, huh? I think she looks like me. What? <laughs> <laughs> At home. Uh, you have visitors. I've been waiting for you. Can you please get in here right away and get in bed? Oh, yes, ma'am. Mm. Excuse me. Yeah. Ooh. What are you doing, honey? I have the magic to make it better. Ooh. I could use some help over here. Audrey, come and stand next to me. OK. Thanks. Now put your hands over her like I do. Abracadabra. Abracadabra. E I E I O. You know what, Laura? This is silly. No, no, it's not. Dear Lord, we thank you for the food that we are about to eat. Amen. Focus on the writing. We have exactly two hours. How about that Ethel Merman bet? No one knows who Ethel Merman is anymore. Well, they should. She was a landmark. Please spare me a history of the American musical theater as you know it. You see, he's doing it again. You know, if you guys got paid for bickering, you'd all be rich. Now, could you just knock it off? Yeah. Maybe I'll just do that. going too great for me right now. Oh, yeah. You think you got problems. My boyfriend just dumped me for my half-sister. Really? Yeah. I got about a half a sister. She's in and out of the hospital, but she's dying slowly and painfully. Oh. Well, that's nothing. My uh, other sister, Andrea, she died about 10 years ago, and she was in her 30s of an aneurysm. Very unusual for someone of that age. Really? I'm not finished. These events have made my parents' life a living hell, and they are really nice people who didn't and don't deserve to lose both of their daughters, who were and are really caring and sensitive people. I bet... Did I tell you about my nephew? He's this really terrific kid who, you know, should be carefree and having the time of his life, but, you know, he almost died in a car accident when he was nine years old, so he's worried all the time, and he's suffering from a severely broken heart because he's losing his mom. Oh, and on top of all that, my wife and I just had this really terrific, beautiful, healthy baby girl. And instead of being at home with her, I'm sitting here in this godforsaken place, drinking myself silly and feeling sorry for myself. Mister, I think you're a little too chatty. I think you should go home to your wife and take a taxi. Get him a taxi. Got you. Good luck. What the hell do you think you're doing? Look, I had a couple of beers. Maybe three. Does that make me a drunk? Yes, actually, I think you're beginning to qualify. Eddie, give me a break. There's a, a lot happening right now. You're damn right. But it is happening to Hope. Not to you. You have to be... Look at me. 
You have to be strong right now. For your parents, and for Ellen, and for our kids. We have a new baby, you know. I'm sorry, Andy. I just don't know what to do with these feelings. You don't have to be strong for me. Who here knows the story of the pig with the wooden leg? Keep it clean, Dave. Does it have underpants in it? Underpants? <laughs> no. Laura, eat your vegetables. This guy is walking along a country road, and he sees this beautiful farm. Why are these people always walking? Don't they have cars? And in the barnyard... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. He sees this big, fat pig with a wooden leg. Well, just then, the farmer comes out. So this guy says to the farmer, gee, that's a beautiful pig, but why has he got a wooden leg? And the farmer says, oh, him? Oh, that's some terrific pig. Saved my boy's life, you know. Yeah. Once we were all out at night, the house caught on fire, and that pig ran inside and dragged my boy out to safety. Dad, hurry it up. The rye bread is growing mold here. All right, all right. So, so, all right. so, so the visitor says, that is absolutely incredible, but tell me, why does a pig have a wooden leg? And the farmer says, well, for a pig that special, you don't eat it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Honestly, I mean, that was in such bad taste, and the children's sitting right here. Well, what's so awful? You're eating corned beef, for God's sake. Hoping? You have a problem with that story? Uh-uh. Mm. Tell you the truth, I think I know exactly what that pig is going through. I didn't get it, really. Me neither. We were just laughing because everybody else was. I'm sorry, honey. Uh, you tired? Mm -hmm. You sleep now. Rest. It's the best thing for you. Thanks, Mom. Hey, how's she doing? She's had better days. How about you? Oh, when she breathes, I breathe. When she doesn't, I'm suffocating. Hey, 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 come here. Listen, Hope is a very courageous girl. If anybody can beat this disease, she can. She can't. Molly, don't talk that way. Oh, face it, David. Her body is turning to stone, bit by bit, a little more every day. She can fight it. But a lot of people survive for years. I don't think I could do this. 
to live through the death of my daughter. I... I always assumed I would go first. And now... to face the loss of another one of my children. Okay, hey, 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 hey. come on. Come on, come on. Molly. Okay, you have to be part of the archive like everybody else. Who, me? So, Annie, tell me. What? Uh, what do you think is Hope's most outstanding quality? You can be absolutely candid, good or bad. Um... Sometime this week, Annie. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to decide between her, her courage yeah. and her, her humor. That's a good I think, answer. I, I think I'd have to go with her courage. That's what my parents said. They said that uh, Hope's courage would be the thing that heals her. Well, they would say that. The exaggeration machine known as Molly and Dave. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We're talking about my parents here. Well, you said I could be completely candid, so. Kenny, you know I love your parents, but they are incurable optimists. Uh, um, uh, what's wrong with that? You should maybe put the camera away. Really? Really. There's nothing at all wrong with that. It's just that sometimes optimism spills over into denial. Are we there yet? Can you listen to me, okay? Your parents, your parents are incredible people. They are, oh, they are so strong. They're fighting the good fight. And they have never lost faith. And that, that's a good thing. But Hope is very, very sick. And she's not going to get better. And nobody is helping her deal with that. Nobody is preparing her for death. Such a low tactic. Oh, no, please. Oh, no. No. Back in the hospital. Damn it! Hey! I planned a trip to come and see you. I thought you were going to be at your parents. What happened? I don't know. I had trouble breathing. My mother had a problem with that. <laughs> Come on in. Look at this. It's signed by all of your ninth graders. You should have seen them. Each one of them took such a long time. Oh, Jen. It's OK. I know what I look like. The good news is I save a fortune on lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> what do the doctors say? Oh, well, that's the bad news. Uh, the doctors say they don't know what to do, so why don't we give her a new drug? I'm on $50,000 worth of drugs right now. Yeah. Just make sure your teacher's insurance is paid up. If mine wasn't, Alan would be selling cookies door to door. 
What's gonna happen to you? What's gonna happen to me? I'm gonna get better. I just have to stay alive till they find a cure. And I'm determined to do that. What, every time I see you, it has to be in the ICU? Hey, you guys. Come here, this is my friend Jennifer, who is my co-teacher in Philadelphia, and she spent her entire life savings to come visit me on summer vacation. Yeah, sure, I know you. You're the one who was uh, nabbed in the McMartin-like thing, right? Funny. My brother writes sitcoms. Don't worry, it's not contagious. I bring some more pictures for you. <gasps> Wonderful. One can never have too many pictures. Ooh. Ooh. Where's Alan? Uh, he couldn't make it. He's got a he's got a cold. He does not. Yeah, he does. From the swimming pool, he was in too long. Then why don't I have a cold? Forget it, Laura. You are such a liar. <laughs> You are the worst liar, Kenny. You always were. Your ears turn red. <laughs> they do. Oh, fine. Now everybody knows. Daddy, Daddy has bad ears. Daddy, Daddy has bad ears. ears. Daddy has bad ears. Daddy. Get a doctor. <coughs> Hello, ladies. Hi. So, what's up, Doc? So, it doesn't look good. Her lungs are deteriorating. And, uh, I think... I think this is a good time for you to get everybody together, and you're gonna need to prepare yourselves for a difficult time. I'll be on the floor if you need me for anything on my page. Okay. Mm -hmm. So who wants dessert? Laura, honey, you listening? I said your favorite word, dessert. I'm not hungry. I think I may be sleepy. I'll go. Excuse me. Hi, Daddy. You okay? Yes. No. You got a tummy ache? No. Got a headache? No. Your sore throat? No. Runny nose? Daddy. Well? What then? I have a sore heart. Oh, honey, why? What is it? Tell me. Hope is very sick, isn't she? Magic didn't work. Laura, sweetheart, that is not true. Your magic did work. It made Hope happy. It gave her strength. She got much better because of you. Maybe it just wore out? Yeah. Maybe that's it. But it didn't mean nothing. It meant a whole lot, baby. I'm not a baby. No. You're most certainly not a baby. But you're my baby, <laughs> aren't you? <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. It's 
a beautiful shot, huh? Yeah, the baby's not bad either. <coughs> uh, so you had no conflict with her growing up? No. Oh I, oh, I had a lot of disagreements with her, mainly because of the guys she went out with. Her taste was different. There was These nothing. people. He is so full her of parents, they're just too real. Have you ever thought about a sitcom? Wait, 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 freeze that. Oh. Okay, look how I've changed. Oh, your hair's a little longer. No. No, I mean it. Look at me. Look at me. The person inside of me doesn't look like She beautiful, Hope, and bright as a penny, too. Aren't you? Is it in your stroller? Annie, help me. What is it? Water. She may be thirsty, but she shouldn't have fluids. I didn't know. Her esophagus. She can't handle it. I didn't know. Feeling better? You look better, sweetheart. Oh, who's this little oh, honey. Your lips are completely dry. Are you thirsty? She's not supposed to have any water. Well, I mean, she's clearly not comfortable. I, I, I think we should talk to somebody. All right, I'll go. She's tired. Let's let her rest. She's doing this for you. What? Hope is fighting so hard to stay alive because she doesn't want to put you and Dave through another death. That's not it. Hope's a fighter. I mean, she, she's determined to get better, and she can. Hope is not going to get better. That is not absolutely certain. Your beautiful daughter is trapped in that body. She is trapped in that body with so much pain. Now she needs something from you. You know that. Never got the brakes. Jed worked so hard for everything, you know. 
Kate's always wanted so much to be liked. You know, she raised Alan all by herself. I know. She nursed him through the car accident. Oh, yeah. Do you know how many letters and cards I got from, from the students, the people she worked with? They all said the same thing. What a wonderful, wonderful teacher she was. Maybe she needs a rest. <laughs> oh, man. Have you met Nurse Star? Hi. Pleasure to meet you. She's taking night courses in psychology at Northridge. Ken's a comedy writer. Really? Say something funny. Uh, what were Adam's first words to Eve? Stand back, sweetheart. I don't know how big this thing gets. He is funny. He's 2A. Looking very natty today. Mm, you think so? Yeah, maybe we should go to the Beverly Center, pick up some blue jeans, show off that butt of yours. Oh, it is one of my best features. All the girls say so. Uh, which girls exactly? All right. Your mother says so. Mm -hmm. I mean, she doesn't exactly say it out loud, but I know she thinks so. Really? It's a very possessive woman, your mother. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I'm an insanely jealous man, so we mesh very nicely. Uh, can you keep a secret? Since we married, I have never been with another woman. I... I never wanted to, Ken. Oh, Kenny. Hope is dying. We mustn't let your mother know. I mean, we have to be positive. You understand? Come on. <laughs> Okay. You signed up for your classes yet? Ancient history, beginning French, film comedies of the 40s, American literature. Can I get you anything? UCLA t-shirt. Ellen. I'm so proud of you. You're a good man.
Yes. We'll be right there. It's time. I'm here, darling. Mommy's here. I would give anything. and rock you like I did when you were a little girl. Do you remember? I would cradle you and sing to you. My funny valentine. Sweet comic valentine. You make me smile. With my heart. Your looks are laughable. Still, you are my What's happening? They're cleaning her up. We can go in in a minute. Uh, well, what did the doctor say? Well, it's not good, but... She refused the respirator and the feeding tube. So she can talk? No. But she's conscious. And she was very clear about it. She shook her head. Uh, uh, can she hear us? You can go back in. What am I supposed to do? Just stay here with her. With us. Um, um, I want to talk to her. Is that okay? sent over some more pictures. And this morning, Laura asked me to call in General Electric because they bring good things to life. Kids. <laughs> some hope. Um, looks like this body doesn't want you anymore. So...
Mom? Mom, can you hear me? I love you, Mom. You know what else? I like you. You're a wonderful friend. I am. Uh... Wait a minute. She moved. She's sitting up. She's getting dressed. <gasps> it's not funny, huh? Poor taste. Shame on you. Why does it take an illness to make us say the things that we don't say unless they're sick? Could you run that by me again? You know what I mean? The only good thing that's come out of this disease is that it's brought the family closer. So you're saying it would have been better to do it without the disease, right? It's not funny. Nothing's not funny. If I've given you that, my man, I consider my job complete. My mom gave me that. That's a good point. Boys, you better come back. Uh, Hope. You want a sandwich? Some chicken soup. Sweetheart. You know what a treasure you are. Hmm? My loving, wonderful girl. I, I have such admiration for you. Oh, sweetheart, you fought like a champion. But now... Now it's... It's over. You, you have to, you. <laughs> you have to let go, sweetheart. <sighs> we'll all see each other again. I know it. Boy, does this not feel right? <sighs> Maybe we should bring her over here. Want the body? No, the head too. This is in very poor taste. Hey, anybody heard about Sal and Ida Stein? I hope this isn't the story I think you're gonna tell. Sal isn't feeling very well, Zane, so he and Ida go to the doctor. This is totally inappropriate for the children. It's, uh, it's too late, Mom. Does it have underpants? <laughs> anyway, the doctor says I'm gonna need a urine sample, a stool sample, and a semen sample. Semen. Never mind. What stool? Little chair. Are you happy now, David? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Does everybody understand what urine is? No. Tell me. Pee-pee! 
<laughs> right, sweetheart. So, semen, stool, and urine. Are we all clear on this? Right. Now, Saul's got a hearing problem, so he turns to his wife and he says, Ida, what did the doctor say? And Ida says, he wants to see your underpants. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I got two underwear jokes and you heard them. <laughs> All right, it was a soak. For information, call Scleroderma Research Foundation, 1-800-441-CURE. My funny valentine Sweet comic valentine You make me smile with my heart Your looks are 